Is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Uh, Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Well, no one's going to want to hear this, but I don't care. So Mike didn't watch Raw, so I'm just going to mute him for a second. I'm just going to get it over with. You guys really want to start talking about the Dome and then interrupt Dome Talk later to go over Raw? Let's just get this horrible show over with. I will say, first off, I know there's a lot of people that are anti-AEW and pro-WWE and vice versa, but let me tell you something. If you are... If you imagine I am a retired wrestler, I am a legend of this business, and you have the opportunity to either do an AEW show or do a WWE show, bro, if you choose that WWE show, you need to see a therapist. You need to see somebody that can help you with your self-esteem. That was... Legends Night on Raw last night. And do you know what they did for Legends Night? Well, there were a bunch of people like Tatanka that literally had nothing to do. They flew across the country in the middle of a pandemic so that they could stand in a hallway with no lines and do nothing on the show. That was half the Legends, okay? The other half, they were humiliated and belittled and mocked and made out to be old, decrepit fools, and they got no comeback on this show. Welcome to Legends Night, everybody. Very quickly, here's what happened on this show. They opened up with a Ms. Morrison and New Day segment, where the New Day was attempting to be more annoying than Ms. and Morrison, who, in storyline, and actually in real life, are two of the most annoying wrestlers uh, in anywhere, this character that they play. So, you had a bunch of fans that didn't watch any wrestling for three months, and finally there's no football, so they decide, hey, I'm going to tune in to Raw tonight, and we open with the most annoying segment of the last several years. If you stuck around, God bless you. They do this segment, they do a match, and amazingly, I'll give them this, the baby faces work together as a tag team, they win, Everybody goes home happy. That was nice. We have a follow-up to Randy Orton in the match. Even though they advertised that Alexa Bliss was going to confront Randy Orton on this show, Alexa's not even there. Bray Wyatt's not there. His father is there as a legend. But for his father, just take the money. Don't even ask anybody about what happened to your son. So, no Alexa. Randy just says, well, you know, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't burn her. The Fiend changed me. I'm disgusted at myself for not burning her to a crisp. Man, I'm going to go find myself some legends. Where's security? Well, they're not there. Angel Garza gets blown off by every female on the show, so he's just a loser. AJ Styles has turned babyface with almost No turn, nothing. He's just a babyface now. And he goes in there, and he actually drags a great match out of Elias, and he pins him, so I guess he's going to be a babyface from here on out. We have Rick and Charlotte heading to the ring, and then Riddle's backstage with Big Show. Randy Orton walks up. Randy Orton belittles the Big Show. You're old. You're fat. You're broken down. You'll never wrestle again. Oh, you're not going to stand up for yourself? All right, I'll leave. Big Show never stands up for himself. He is an old, broken-down loser. Payne and Lacey versus Charlotte and Asuka. No one knows what happened here. I think that Flair was supposed to try to trip Peyton, but he accidentally tripped Charlotte. But... There's no spot where it would be an accident. He just grabs Charlotte's leg. She gets pinned by Peyton. Charlotte belittles, eviscerates, embarrasses her father, tells him to go away. He goes away in tears. Welcome to Legends Night. Then the next day, she just, up like, she's apologized to him on Twitter. So I don't even know what the point of any of this was. We have Seamus, Drew, and Hulk Hogan backstage. Hogan endorses Drew. Drew at least looked like he was having fun. Matt Riddle faces Lashley. Matt Riddle's a babyface, Lashley's a heel. The babyface attacks the heel from behind before the match starts. He beats on him. The heel fights back. At the end of the match, the heel puts the babyface in the hurt lock. The babyface taps. The ref doesn't see it. The heel drops the babyface. The ref goes, I didn't call for the bell. I didn't see it. So the babyface rolls up the heel from behind and steals a pin and then runs away like a thief in the night. Mark Henry... Walking around backstage, he's got a, his legs all messed up. They make him look as, as pathetic as possible. He's on one of those little scooters. Of course, up walks Randy Orton. He belittles. He eviscerates. He talks about how Mark Henry's broken down and he's ruined and he'll never be in a Royal Rumble again. He can't even walk. 
Mark Henry sheepishly wheels away. Welcome to Legend tonight, everybody. Charlie, Lashley and MVP, they challenge Riddle for a match. I just want to see Lashley beat the hell out of this Matt Riddle guy, even though I'm supposed to be upset at Lashley. I don't even know why. He's the heel. Mandy faces Shayna, but Shayna beats her ass. Dana comes out to fight for her friend. She gets her ass beat, but she gets a fluke pin. Then Shayna beats up both of them again. This is supposed to make me want to see them in a tag team match, even though last week on this very show, I saw the tag champs destroy these two. But hey, let's book backwards. Make me want to see this match. Now, Flair, Ric Flair's backstage happy as can be. He's with IRS and Molly. He got eviscerated earlier in the show, but hey, it's Ric Flair. We can't just eviscerate him once. Randy walks up. He says, you're a pathetic old man. I never learned anything from you. You're disgusting, and your daughter is ten times the wrestler you ever were. Flair starts to cry. Randy walks off. Legends night. We have Randy and Jeff Hardy. Literally, they just do a match where Randy beats Jeff Hardy clean in the middle, and it was a fine match. I mean, if you if you're there for the wrestling, it was a good wrestling match. We have Shelton and Cedric losing to the Lucha House Party after the Hurt Business can't get along. Cedric walks off, so they're continuing that storyline. At least that makes sense. Angel gets blown off again, and finally, the main event is Drew McIntyre versus Keith Lee. All of the legends come out. To root on Keith Lee. Let's go, Keith! Well, Keith gets in the ring. He gets beat clean in the middle. And afterwards, they just get rid of him. And we're going off the air, so Drew grabs a mic. He's gonna cut a promo, but they're so low on time that they just play Goldberg's music. Goldberg then comes out, and because it's scripted, Goldberg has to talk about a promo that Drew cut that he didn't actually cut because they played Goldberg's music before he had a chance to cut his promo. Goldberg, on a show where Randy Orton eviscerated every one of the legends, Goldberg has to come out and tell Drew McIntyre that he has no respect for the legends. What? So, it is Drew McIntyre versus Goldberg at the Royal Rumble because they decided on Saturday that they didn't have anybody ready for Drew McIntyre at the Royal Rumble because I guess one day Vince woke up and went, Oh, there's a Royal Rumble booked. What am I going to do? They had no time to book a challenger for Drew, so they called Goldberg, and that's your match. So anyway, show sucked. It's a terrible show. Nothing makes sense. It's totally nonsensical. They can't hit their time cues. They've been doing this for like 25 years. They still can't figure this out. It's terrible. If you love these video clips, head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click Join. For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes, over 300 at current count, full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Lance Storm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.